everybody and welcome back to what is a brand new video on the channel it's part two of six for these kind of videos of this time of the year again as we all know because the, the league season is so close to starting again and we go on to part two now it is my vanarama national league predictions of 2024 25 the fifth tier of english football who gets relegated to the National League North or South? Who has a bang average mid-table season? Who makes the playoffs? And who are the two clubs that get promoted to the EFL, the Football League, in League Two? So let's get started with this then, because I have got to crack on and make my mind up in what we go with for this. But yeah, let's get on with it. Okay, so in 24th, I have gone with last season's National League South playoff winners, Braintree. The Essex club led by impressive young manager Angelo Harrop, the self-styled pub team from Essex. They're going to try and defy the odds uh, this season, of course, once again. They defied the odds last season when they got promoted via the playoffs. Uh, I think it'll be too much of a difficult task for them. I could be heavily proved wrong on this, but uh, I do think it'll be too soon for Braintree to be comfortable in this league so I do think Braintree will go straight back down to the National League South and play Truro next season. Then in 23rd I have gone with AFC Fylde the coasters that looked doomed from the drop last season uh, only to find their form at Christmas um, the revival came under the charge of Chris Beach but this time I think it will be a terrible season for them. I think it will be a horrible season for them. I think it'll be very hard. Obviously, they've worked their way to get to the National League, but this time, I think they will go back down. I think it'll be very hard for them. Uh, so, yeah, it doesn't help that um, this team has shipped 82 goals as well. No, I think it'll be too much for um, Fylde and I am sending the West Lancashire club down in my predictions. In 22nd, I've gone with Tamworth, the champions of the National League North last season. Absolutely pipping Scunthorpe to the line and nobody expected Tamworth to top the National League North and it's exact, um, and um, beat the big hitters that are Scunthorpe. It is exactly what they did. Um, so there we are. Back-to-back -back promotions, Andy Peake's side. Uh, Will they keep that good run and good feel, good factor going? I'm not so sure. They have done very well over the last two years, but this time, this time, I think it'll be um, hard for them. Uh, they have built in an incredible spirit. They won't be phased by being one of the division's only part-time semi-professional teams, but it's still an uphill task. I think it will be a very tough um, season for them, but... I think they will give it everything, but I still don't, don't think it'll be enough. So I'm going to say Tamworth in 20 seconds. And then in 21st, just going down, I've gone with Maidenhead, which might sound like a really harsh prediction because every year, they remind me actually of Cambridge in League One and us in the Championship, but every year it's tempting to predict Maidenhead for the drop. And every year, Alan Devonshire guides them to safety. So this will be their eighth consecutive season in the National League. But will it be the season they finally go down? Uh, it was really hard for me to predict Maidenhead, to be fair, because they know how to survive in this league. They know how to be comfortable in this league. But obviously, we've seen it from other leagues the last few years, like Fleetwood last season, potentially could be Shrewsbury this season. But yeah, I think this time will be the time they go down. I just think there's going to be 20 teams stronger than them this time. And I do think it will be the Berkshire Magpies that will drop to the National League South. So, uh, can Alan Devonshire mastermind another survival? Can they do it again? We'll see, but I think it'll be hard for Maidenhead. I've got them 21st. And then in 20th, just surviving the drop, I have got... You got no fans? You got no fans? Wealdstone. What a meme that is. What a club. Obviously, Wealdstone survived last season thanks to three wins from four games in a fixture-clogged final week of the season. Matt Taylor has taken charge this summer, looking to kickstart his managerial career after a tough spell at Shrewsbury last time out. Uh, the eye-catching summer rival, Adrian Mariapa from Watford. Well, he's been at Watford for years, hasn't he? But 
This will be interesting. I think that alone is the reason why I've got them to beat the drop this time. Uh, well, beat the drop again, as I should say. Um, but yeah, um, Craig Eastman also brings back experience of the division from his days at Sutton. So you never know. It could be a much different season for Wealdstone. Uh I do think they'll struggle again, though. Uh, I do think they're good enough to survive, though. And I like, like I've just said, I think that signing of Mariapa is... That's huge. Could be a big bolster into how they do this season. So, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put them 20th. 19th, I have Boston. It's been 17 years since Boston were relegated from League Two and then immediately demoted to that National League North for financial reasons. So they will be thrilled to be back in the fifth tier, in my opinion. Uh, they've actually got the same nickname as Argyle, Boston, the Pilgrims. So I like that. I like that. Um, they're finally back in the National League, uh, having won promotion through the National League North playoffs. Similar to what I'm going to have with Oxford in the Championship, I think because of how long it really has taken Boston to be back in this level, they've got to surely stay up this time. The former Football League club. Uh, it'll be very interesting to see how they get on. Um, despite they have lost um, the, their playoff final match winner, Jimmy Knowles, to Accrington Stanley and uh, his strike partner, Kelsey Mooney. But uh, yeah, I do have hopes for Boston. I think they will have a, um, I do think they'll have an okay season. A bit hard, but they'll give it a go. And because it's their first season back in this league, uh, well, for years and 17 years since they were last in League Two, I'm going to back them to survive. And they'll be well up for this season, honestly. Yeah, I'm going to say 19th for Boston. 18th, I have Ebb's Fleet, the team that survived on the final day last time. And it was just a reward for manager uh, Danny Searle, who took over in February. Uh, I know Miles Kenlock and Billy Clifford have been snapped up by Barnett, but um, Jim, Jim Kellerman and Louis John do bring bags of National League experience. Uh, but Ebb's Fleet will hope that defender Tyler Cordner on loan from York, can rediscover his uh, his best form. But yeah, no, I, I think I can see them do better than last season, to be honest, ever since with that takeover from man, uh, manager Danny Searle. Um, and given that I think there'll be four worse teams than Ebb's Fleet this season, I think they will survive again, except I think they'll be more comfortable. So yeah, I'm going to go 18th for Ebb's Fleet United. In 17th, I've gone with Altrincham, which is probably a massive shock, I know. A massive shock in this, considering they finished fourth last season in the National League. Uh, basically, I think they're going to badly miss the summer departure of their star player, Chris Conn-Clark, who has just been swooped in by Peterborough to join League One this season. Uh, to be fair... Phil Parkinson is one of the best managers outside of the EFL. I just think Altrincham's going to be one of those teams, one of those casual teams that's going to drop off this season and not quite have the season that they had from last season. So a bit of a bold one here, I know, but I'm going to say 17th for Altrincham. 16th, I've gone with Eastleigh, a club I really like since I did my uh, master's degree commentating at this football ground, the Silver Lake Stadium. Former Southampton goalkeeper Kelvin Davis took charge of Eastleigh. That was actually going on a slippery slope in February and then steered them to safety. Uh, without Paul McCallum's 31 goals, they might have genuinely gone down. I do think it will be another um, um, mediocre season for Eastleigh, though, I can't lie. So I wouldn't be shocked if they do end up in the bottom half of the table around where I have them again. So I'm going to say 16th for the Spitfires. And then 15th, I have Woking, which obviously Woking had a terrible season last season. Really, really underperformed, nearly went down. They stayed up at the end, but um, it was inherited their tricky situations by Michael Doyle when he took over in December and then led the Cardinals to safety. Woking, I think, will be absolutely fine. Uh, I do think it'll be another hard season for them. I think they'll do better, but again in that mid-table battle where they do struggle uh could be in a relegation scrap but we will see we will see i'm gonna go 15th for woking 
14th, I've gone with Halifax, which is another drop-off because they also made the playoffs last season. Uh, so uh, they And they have defied the odds uh, most years as well, Halifax. So uh, credit to them for that. This time, I think they will drop off uh, slightly. They've had a, quite a few summer exits. Uh, I don't think they'll go down, though. I think they'll be absolutely OK. But I do think it will be a more struggle of a season regardless. So I'm going to say 14th for the Yorkshire Club. And then 13th, completing the bottom half of the table, I've gone with Rochdale. Similar to what I have with Reading upcoming for League One, but financial and ownership problems and all sorts of um, negativity around Rochdale is why I've got them in mid-table, in the bottom half of the table. Uh, and their first ever non-league campaign did actually bring them to a perfectly average record. Winning 16, lost 16, drew 14. Patience is required at that football club, in my honest eyes. Uh, too good to go down. I don't think they'll be good enough for the playoffs, though. And they've had all sorts of trouble going on off the pitch at Rochdale. I'm going to put them 13th. So in 12th, I've gone with Sutton, who have had a major clear out following League Two relegation last season. Uh, a major clear out from manager Steve Morrison. Uh, Hungry players, many picked from the levels below. Uh, unfortunately, I don't see them going straight back up. Um, they were really good, a nice fan base when they came down to uh, Home Park last season. No, honestly, no credit to their fans once again uh, for that day. Commiserations for their relegation, um, though, regardless. Um, but no, I just think there's going to be 11 stronger sides than them this season. I really think they're in for a hard season, but. I could be proved wrong on this. They could get playoffs immediately, but uh, I don't see it. I'm sorry, Sutton. 12th. 11th, I've got Dagenham and Redbridge, who have a fresh era with new owners recently taken over the club. Uh, and the last few seasons, they have pretty much been in the top half of the National League. I don't see them challenging for playoffs quite yet. Unlike Torquay in the National League South, this is a new takeover ownership where I do think they'll take time to adjust. But again, I think there'll be 10 stronger teams than Daggers, so I wouldn't be surprised by this at all. But I also wouldn't be surprised if they finished higher though, but I'm going to go 11th for Dagenham and Redbridge. Ah, oh, well, isn't that a lovely view? Shannaland and the Motherland. So in 10th, I've got Hartlepool. Uh, don't think they're going to quite improve from their 12th place finish last season. And I think I'm expecting another hard season for the Pools and Jeff Stelling's club. Uh, they've got a new boss in Daryl Sarrell, who led Woking to fourth two seasons ago, but had a, had a tough time last season. So you never know. He could bounce back with Hartlepool. But again, I think there's going to be some dark horses and strong competition for this season's National League, so I'm going to put Hartlepool in 10. Ninth, I've got Aldershot, the club I used to be at work experience for. Um, my reasoning being, and this is quite gutting for Aldershot really, because they only just missed out last season. Uh, first of all, um, they have a very poor defensive record. It could, it could um, be changed though, because um, Aldershot have signed goalkeeper Marcus Dewhurst from Wealdstone and Chelmsford City's highly rated centre-back Luke Jenkins. Uh, but my thing with Aldershot is that they just, the last few seasons, I know they have straight survival and all that the last few seasons, but also in general, they haven't found a way to get out of this league. And the last time they were in League Two was about 2013 or something, and still haven't found a way to get back to the Football League. And I can still see that continuing this season. So I think they're going to just miss out again. Uh, finishing one place lower than last season and also I've got two dark horses ahead of them. And one of those dark horses uh, I think is going to finish in eighth and just miss out on the National League playoffs to League Two. And it was a team that finished 20th last season who I can see massively improving this season. But in eighth I've gone with York, one of my dark horses for this season. Um, the Minster men were a riddle last season as a host of big name signings failed to deliver. It actually led to Neil Ardley losing his job back in February, but they've plucked in impressive manager Adam 
Hinshelwood from Worthing in the National League South and they've managed to scramble out of trouble. The big summer arrival is Ollie Pierce, but will his goals be enough? Because um, his, his the amount of goals is spectacular, 43 in 46 league appearances. A bit like Truro in the National League South for what I have, I think it won't be this season. Next season, I think they could be even better and potentially be back in League Two. But I do think they will be up there this season for sure. I think they're going to just miss out though. York, I've got them in eighth. In seventh, just scraping into the playoffs, I've gone with Solihull. They always find a way to get into the playoffs lately. They honestly do. Um, obviously, um, they suffered Wembley heartbreak last season to Bromley, of course, on penalties. Uh, I do think they'll be up there once again, but I do think there'll be other teams that potentially, potentially could be stronger. But I'll say seventh for them. I'm not going to underestimate them one bit, to be honest, but I do expect them to be up there again. And knowing what they're like, they're very well, they're very good at sneaking into the playoffs, especially. And I do think they'll come seventh, but will it be their year this time? Will it be the season Solihull finally reach League Two? I don't know, we will see, but uh, yeah, can see them be up there again. Sixth, Yeovil. Manager Mark Cooper knows what this league is all about. And yes, I know they just got relegated and immediately dominated the National League South to go straight back up. Dominated the National League South last season. Spent a lot of money as well to be back. So, considering they've just got been promoted, I, this might be a little bit of a bold prediction, but I'll tell you what. Despite losing Frank Nuble, former Argyle man, to Danny Cowley's Colchester in League Two, they have signed Aaron Jarvis from one of their rivals in Torquay. Uh, and Brett McGavin, a fellow former Torquay man as well, has also made the same move, adding to a good squad that genuinely I can honestly see being in the playoffs. Mark Cooper knows what this league is all about. Yeovil will 100% finish highest, in my opinion, out of the promoted clubs. Listed everyone away in the National League South last season, and they are my other dark horses. I can really see them get playoffs this season. Will they go up though? I might be a bit too soon for them, but genuinely, they're building a good squad at the moment, and I can see them do even better this season. They'll take playoffs first season back as well, after a season in the National League South. And then in fifth, I've got Gateshead, uh, one place higher than what they did last season. Um, and also they're a club I can genuinely see try and get revenge this season, especially as well. I don't think they're good enough to challenge the top four, but I do think they will get playoffs. Um, and it, and um, well, they were banned from competing in the playoffs because they don't meet the EFL's required 10 year security of tenure of tenure on their stadium for newly promoted clubs, which I just think is a joke. Honestly, it's stupid because if you get promoted, you deserve to go up. It's as simple as that. I really feel for Gateshead fans on that one. I really do. It's just not fair. Um, and they've got a local man in charge for them as well. When I say that, um, someone who used to play for Newcastle in Rob Elliott, who is now the Gateshead manager. He is the permanent manager for them. Uh, He's also won the FA Trophy, Rob Elliott, Elliott. So that does bring continuity. But despite the fact that they've lost, they, the, despite the fact that they've lost Ed Francis to Exeter, of all clubs, Gateshead will be fine, and I can see them be playoffs again. They'll want revenge from the events that happened last season. One place higher, I've got them fifth. So that leaves me with the top four, who I think is going to be the autos battle for the National League this season. And those top four are Barnet, Forest Green, Oldham and Southend. Let's see what I think then. By the way, just to confirm before I talk about the top four, I don't have any one of Gateshead, Yeovil or Solihull winning the playoffs, which means one of these three, one of these four teams is going to win the playoffs, in my honest opinion. And two of these four teams will go up, in my opinion. So now we've just got to work out who. But I've got Oldham fourth. 
I've got Oldham fourth. They've been very underwhelming the last two years, but Mickey Mellon knows how to take teams out of this league into League Two. Done it with Fleetwood, done it with Tranmere, but I still don't think Oldham are quite ready yet to push who I have for the top two, or even let alone first in general, actually. So I'm going to put Oldham fourth. In third, I've gone with Barnett, who crumbled in the playoffs last season at the hands of Solihull and definitely were the second best team in the National League last time out. Um, Dean Brennan has wasted no time in making eye-catching summer signings to put the Bees in the conversation for top spot. It could be Barnett's first season back in League Two for quite a while, but I'll say third for them. Uh, so that just leaves me on my top two now. That just leaves me on my top two. The return of Anthony Hartigan is massive, to be fair. I'll say third, though, for Barnett, because the other two, I think, are going to do better. I'll talk about Forest Green first. Forest Green, I've got to win the league in first. Um, Steve Cotterill, they've kept, who I think is far too good for this league. Um, I still think Forest Green would have stayed up in League Two had they not brought him in so late after the disastrous spell they had in League Two under Troy Deeney that ended up costing FGR with having back-to-back -back relegations. I thought keeping Steve Cotterill is absolutely massive for them. They brought in Liam Serkham from Exeter, someone I'm not a fan of at all, obviously. They've also brought in Adam May from Cambridge, these are all former League One players. Forest Green will definitely win the league, in my honest opinion. They all go straight back up. They're very well run. They've got a lot of money. They'll go straight back up, in my eyes. They'll win this league, no problem. I do think they'll battle it out, though, with Southend, who I've got second, with Oldham, with Barnet, but they'll win it, in my eyes. That Steve Cotterill's just too good for this league, in my honest opinion. And they will be back in League Two in no time, in my eyes. Which means I've got South End to come second after... Well, it, if it wasn't for their 10-point deduction, they would have finished in the playoffs last season. And I think things are starting to turn around for the Shrimps because obviously it's been very dark the last few seasons have been for South End in terms of the finance at the club. But they have just had a takeover off the field. Um, still dragging on though, to be fair, and um, the transfer embargo that they have been under, that should be lifted. Um, I do think this is going to be the start of things to turn around for Southend, because they would have been playoffs no problem if it wasn't for their deduction, and this is now the time I feel they can turn that around under, under Kevin, Kevin Maher, Kevin Maher. So... That's why I have them second. I feel like this is the season they could potentially go back up to League Two. This is their best chance, in my eyes. This is their best chance to return to the fourth tier after being in the National League for quite a few seasons now. So, who do I think will go up with Forest Green? I'm going to rule Oldham out because I do think Oldham will have another season in the National League. So, it's between Barnet and South End for me. Uh, South ends to get past their takeover problems and do it, or will Barnet finally get that step over and do it themselves? That is what I'm wondering now at the moment. Uh, well, I have gone with South End at the end to win the playoff final. Um, Barnet will give it everything, will give it absolutely everything in my eyes. I just think maybe that collapse they had last season might be the start of things to come on them not quite doing the same this season but they could well and truly get revenge this time and finally do it a, a bit similar to what Bolton could potentially do in League One this season but we'll go on to my League One predictions when that comes out but yeah I just feel like this is the season South End finally go back to League Two I do think Barnet will join them in the future but oh, it was so hard it was so hard between these two on who I think will go up with Forest Green. It was really hard. It could be, really be one of these two. It really could, in my eyes. I mean, 
those four clubs are the four favourites in my eyes, um, in my opinion, and I think they will be the top four. So, yeah, I'm going to go Forest Green and South End to go up. And my reasons for South End, exactly the same reasons I have for Torquay, the league below. So there we are. That's the end of my video, guys, for my National League 2024-25 predictions. And there you are. I have got Tamworth. I have got Tamworth, Braintree, Fylde and Maidenhead to join National League North or National League South. And I've got Forest Green and South End to get promoted to League Two this season. So yeah, there you are. Up the Janners, up the Argyle, up the Greens, up the Pilgrims, up the Plymouth. Come on, you boys in green. Green Army. And yeah, we'll see you all there for that one. Take care. Cheerio. When they pull on the green, they're all Janners.